Thank you, Sam. Amen to that. Will everyone please stand? We're going to say the Lord's Prayer. Thank you. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us and deliver us from evil. Deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Please stay standing for our morning hymn. <laughs> Please have a seat, and let us be still for five minutes. Let yourself be anchored in the thought, God is the love that I am, or whatever mantra speaks to your heart. Anchor yourself in that right here. We're going to be still and enjoy our high communion with the high holy self.
Diane. Oh, here it is. I knew I had to talk somewhere. Here it is. <laughs> Good morning. Welcome. I'm glad to be with you. I'm so happy that you're here. I'm going to talk today a little bit uh, about this idea of more healing. You know, in the science of mind philosophy, Ernest Holmes says this in our textbook. He says, there is nothing to heal, only God to reveal. Hmm. Well, how do I reveal God here? How do I reveal God in this situation? How do I reveal God in this relationship? How do I reveal God over here at work? You know, we work with spiritual principles in our teaching. And spiritual principles, we believe, work for everyone. They're available to everyone. But if you don't know about the principle, you don't know that you are actually in an active relationship with spiritual principle. So like gravity is a principle that works for everybody, I don't know anybody who's exempt from the laws of gravity, do you? I don't know anybody who's exempt from the laws of thermodynamics or laws of buoyancy, things like that, electricity. Um, Years ago, I remember hearing the Reverend Johnny Coleman from Chicago say this. She said, she used to say, it works, which was talking about spiritual principle. And she says, it works if you work it. You have to come into an intelligent relationship with principle. Um, the mystical truth is, yes, from the big, big picture, everything is one. As, and, and the way it works is that as we are on the inside, so we will experience on the outside, yes. So sometimes I think that the era of consciousness, uh, in this era of consciousness that we are in right now, where I think we have so much working on our behalf, um, I hate to say that I think sometimes we've lost a little ground, that I think we should be more aware and, and, and responsible, that we have a catching up to do, if you will. So I think there is an irrepeatable moment that we are, this is an irrepeatable moment on earth that we are living right now. And the choices we are making now will dictate our future on every level in every way. 
right? Because this is, this is how it goes. If you want to know what your future is going to be, look into yourself and say, what am I thinking now? What am I focusing on now? Where am I putting a lot of energy, either in a positive way or a negative way? But if you're putting a lot of energy into that, that's going to become part of your future. So I think this is an incredible time to be uh, an individualized aspect of divine consciousness on Earth. Uh, this has to be the moment. I mean, really, this is it. This has to be the moment we awaken. And every single person contributes to that. Every person helps make the difference. So I think for big healing, big healing requires, I want to say, the involvement of our soul. And Ernest Holmes, again, says that our soul is the subjective level of consciousness. You know? So what have I put energy into? You know, that which, what, where have, has my energy gone into things that's really depleted my spirit? Where have I put energy into worrying about things that have not added to my life? You know, that might be maybe it was a relationship, or maybe it's a job, or maybe it's a, some dialogue I'm having in my head. But we want to involve spirit, mind, emotions, and our body to have full experience of healing. People always want a reason why. You know what, they want to know, if I could only know why I was sick, if I could only know why they left, I could, if I could only know why they didn't pick me for the job, if I could only know why, if I could only know how this was going to happen. If I think, see, what it is is humanly, I think if I get a reason, then I'll be healthy. <laughs> you know? But that is a false premise, you know? Why did they leave? Because they didn't like you. That's why they left. They just didn't like you. Okay, now, do you, are you healed? No, absolutely not. Right? They, you were just not a good match. So that was the answer there. Okay? People always want this reason why. Like if I get the why, then everything, if I could just, and, and that's what they say. I have heard this a million times. They say, if I could just know why. Those questions keep us in victim consciousness, I believe. You know, why this happened to me. Right? That's a big to me. And whenever we're doing to me, that's victim consciousness, right? I can't indulge any victim consciousness in myself, and you should not either, especially if we want to have healing. And of course we do. Of course we do. You know, we are all being guided constantly. I believe that's true. And, and, and largely, I think we don't really follow it. You know, people will come to me and they'll say, oh, I need you to treat for me to be guided. I need you to treat for me to be guided. And, and so here's why. I think we're getting guidance all the time. I think spirit is telling us something, offering us something, suggesting something that would be good for us, that would be helpful, that would be life enhancing. And we go, nah, I don't want to do that. You know, so I'm just sitting on the sofa, becoming one with the sofa, right? I mean, I do that very well. And the thought occurs to me, you know what would be great right now? You should get up and do a big walk. Like for the next hour, hour and a half, you should go for a big, enormous walk. Or maybe nothing is dramatic. You should just call this person right now. Somebody just pops into your head. You should give this person a call. Shoot them a text. Send them an email. Do something. You know, uh, oh, don't eat that. Oh, but it's so pretty. It looks so shiny. It looks sweet and fluffy and yummy and deli Don't eat that, you hear? You go, nah, I'm going to eat it anyway. Or maybe um, something as simple as you need to rest now. You should stop doing all the doing, and you should rest now. And we go, nah, I don't want to do that. And so the problem with this is if we don't listen to that stuff, that little stuff like put down the burrito, <laughs> right? we will never be able to receive guidance around the bigger, more important issues that we have in our life. You know, I was meditating the other day, and, and this just went right across the screen of my mind. And it was very simply this. You can't heal a body you're hating. Oh, wow. Wow, that seems very obvious, doesn't it? But when I think about it, I go, oh my gosh, how often have I been mad at my body because it's not doing what I want it to do. It's not showing up the way I want it to show up, not behaving the way I think it should behave. You know, and, and by the same token, not only can you not heal a body that you hate, you can't heal conditions that you hate. Why? Because energy goes where energy flows. So if I'm putting hateful energy into these conditions, or if I'm putting hateful energy onto my own body, I'm telling the universe, you know what? 
we're going to wait on the healing because I'm getting so much value out of hating myself. I'm getting so much value out of hating these conditions. I want to just keep hating them rather than heal them. See, I think there are things we could ask ourselves that will help us start to untie and unravel some of this. Why is this here? Why is this experience here? Why is this person here? How have I contributed to it? What must I learn from this? And now the big one, the big one. Who do I need to forgive in order to be healed? And then you sit with eyes closed. And people will flash across your mind, maybe like going through the yearbook of high school. You know, just page after page after page of people. And you just want to be in forgiveness with everybody, with everybody, with everybody. Emma Curtis Hopkins says, I forgive everyone and everything. I forgive everyone and everything. And I'm going to tell you that from my experience around healing, forgiveness is one of the most key components. And you think, how can that be? How can that be? The fact that I can't stand this person over here has nothing to do with what's going on in this body temple. And we're here to tell you, wrong. <laughs> we believe it does. We believe it has everything to do. This person over here that you can't stand and you actively, you know, it's the ex, it's the old boss, it's the neighbor who irritates you, whatever that is, that is absolutely keeping you from having the peaceful consciousness that heals that we say we want. <sighs> oh, my God. In Science of Mind, one of the things I love about this teaching is that we are a self-reflective teaching. That means when there's a problem, I'm trained to turn within, not immediately go outside to see what's out here in the world that will fix this. What's out here in the world that will make this better? What's out here in the world that can make this go away? You know, it's like, oh, I have to look within again. I have to give my attention to my inner life, not my outer life, right? So we're always looking within. See, because the soul, I believe our soul that is on a journey, and we know that journey is back to the Father's house, but the soul longs to be free. It doesn't want just for some healing at the level of the personality or the human condition, right? It, the soul, your soul wants to be free. So know with me that all solutions already exist in the realm of spirit, right? So wherever we have a burning question, God has a burning answer. Wherever we have a burning need, the universe has something that's burning that will fill that need, right? The soul longs to be free. So I think our human incarnation is not something to get through or escape from. It's something we actually want to go into or be here with our eyes wide open, heart wide open, arms wide open, to experience and embrace all of it that we possibly can. And I think because, because I think this life journey is for us to glorify the light and the life and the intention of God that's within us. So our life is to bear witness to the good of God, to the truth that God has created. So some years back, an author that I really like, Howard Thurman, he said, when you surrender your life to God, God places you where you need to be. So logic tells me that, OK, if I have surrendered, then what shows up in my life is exactly what the universe knows I need to experience, right? if I have surrendered in a conscious way. Now, what people often do is they are going down for the third time, and they decide, oh, maybe I should surrender, <laughs> which I think is better than not. But really, what we want to do is we want to be ahead of the curve. We are here fleshing out our oneness with God. We are here fleshing out our divine nature. We want to glorify the presence of God with our living right now. That's why I say open mind, open heart, open arms. I think this is how we glorify the presence of God through our living. I, we don't meditate to escape. And I can tell you now, after years, I'm a meditator. I love to meditate. I feel better when I meditate. And so I meditate not to escape from something out here. I meditate to bring what I experience in here forward out here. Do, do, are you with me on that? It's like, you know, I touch a place in here, uh, this place of spirit, a place of peace, a place of love, a place of compassion. And it's like, oh, OK, that really is within me. OK, I can bring that out into the world because I know it's really here. See, my life, my life and your life connected to God is the answer to the problem. Right? So we can just stop right there. That's the answer to the problem. You know, when our life and when we know our life is connected to the life of God, 
the answer is always, always going to be revealed. You know, we like to say that, oh, these conditions in my life out here, these are not right. These conditions that we're experiencing, that we're living through right now, they are actually the condensation of the places where we are disconnected. It's the condensation of, of my off-track thinking, my off-course thinking. It's the condensation of all of the doubting and the fearing that's been going on. See, it doesn't matter why or how we got off course. And, and I'm here to tell you, I have been off course in my lifetime. I certainly have. I have like been on the path, on the path, on the path, and then all of a sudden, where'd the path go? The path was, I was like, I've completely lost the path and, and wasn't aware that I had lost the path when I was lost, right? Because you don't, you don't immediately go, wow, I must be lost. I, me, because I'm a little slow on this, I think, well, you know, I've just gotta, I've just gotta work the path a little harder. That's what I gotta do. I gotta walk a little faster on the path. That's what, that will do it. That will do it at all. So I'll tell you, years ago, I was hiking, I was hiking in Spain. I was walking the Camino and it was great. And I was having a great day one day and I don't know, maybe my blood sugar was low or something like that, but I, I got off track. And I got off track by about five miles. And, when, and, and, and for those five miles, it seemed like hours, but it wasn't that long, but it, but it was quite a ways. And for hours, it seemed like I did not see another person. So finally, finally, I get to this little village and I show, I take out the map and I say, this is where I wanna go. Am I there? And they said, no. <laughs> You're not there. Nonaki. <laughs> Me? Nonaki? No. Usted? A key. Way over here. And I said, so can I go from a key to a key? Can I go from here to here? And they said, no, you've got to go all the way back and start again. So I, so I tell you this, is like, you know how, how you just think there's always got to be a shortcut in consciousness? At least I do. I have looked for the shortcuts. I have spent the last 40 years looking for the shortcuts. And I realize there are actually no shortcuts. Um, so, anyway, so I'm walking, walking back, you know, so, okay, so, so I did an extra 10 miles that day, you know, because I wasn't paying attention. I was off in la-la land. And, but... But I thought, well, you know, this is where I'm supposed to be, obviously, because it's where I am. So why don't I just be open and experience what's here? And the sun was out and the sky was beautiful. And I had to walk over an overpass. And just as I was about to walk over the overpass, a shepherd, yes, a real shepherd, <laughs> comes up from the other side of the overpass with about 200 sheep. And in a matter of seconds, I am enfolded I am just totally covered, surrounded by sheep. I don't really know that I've ever been that close to a sheep before. <laughs> and, and all of a sudden, it struck me how funny this was. That like if I hadn't gone out of my way, if I hadn't gotten myself lost, if I hadn't surrendered to be open to the experience, I would have missed this great experience of being on a road surrounded by 200 sheep. And you know, they're not the smartest animals. <laughs> They're, you know, because they're just like bumping into you constantly, and they'll bow, and you bump into you again, and they just, you know, them. But, but, what, but it was such a good experience. It was one of the highlights, one of the highlights of my trip, you know. So again, I want to come back to this. The remembrance that our life is connected to the life of God is the answer to the problem. So I would say to you today that two things that I think are absolutely essential to having healing in our life. And I know we have lots of things. We meditate and we pray and we affirm stuff, but I want to talk about two things particularly today. And the first is this forgiving, that who do I need to forgive in order to be healed? Because so often we've got a little bit of nit nit, you know, a little something here, a little something with this person, this person I just avoid, this person I see them and I just walk by on the street, that kind of thing. <clears throat> it's all got to go. And the other piece is about gratitude right now. What can I be grateful for right now? And I know when we're in the midst of something and we feel like I just want this to be healed, then I could be grateful. Part of the way you're gonna get it healed is being grateful now. Being grateful that you have the health you have today. Being grateful that you have the love in your life that you have today. Being grateful for the work or the supply that you have today. See, I think we have it backwards. People often think that if I'm grateful now, I'm telling the universe I'm, a, I, I'm satisfied and I'm not gonna get any more. And it's like, mm, you're partially right, you're partially wrong. 
If you are grateful now, yes, you're telling the universe you're satisfied. And the universe, I believe, likes a satisfied customer. Right? So when, when you're a satisfied customer in the universe, the universe is going to bring you more to be satisfied about. Right? I think we have, we have thought incorrectly. If I'm satisfied, then that's the end of my, I'm not going to get any more good. But that's not how it is. You know, it's just like I'm getting ready. We're going to have an abundance workshop this summer. And, um, and I'm already thinking about that. And one of the things I always say to people in the abundance workshop, it's like if you're saving the good stuff in life for later, the universe knows it doesn't need to bring you any more good stuff. You say, well, why? I'm just saving this for best. That's what people do. They save it for best, right? And, and so because you're not using the good stuff now. If you are somebody who's using the best you have now, wearing the best clothes you have and the best cologne or whatever. I don't know what you have. You know, I, I always hear about women saving their negligees for special occasions and things like that. I don't I certainly wouldn't know anything about that. But <laughs> The important thing is if you want more special occasions, you need to use that stuff now. Because then the universe sees you as somebody who uses the good stuff. Oh, this is somebody, because he's using the good stuff, we're going to bring him more good stuff. You know, it's the same principle everywhere in our life. I think the answer, really, all right, so we're going to be grateful. We're going to forgive. This is an important part of healing. And then I think we have to absolutely ask ourselves, am I doing what I believe I came here to do? And if I'm not, how can I do a little of that or some of that every day? So, that, so I'm telling the universe, some of my energy, I have enough energy so that some of my energy every day can go into what I believe I came here to do. Right? You know? And so when, if we're doing what we came here to do, or we have some, some definite sense of that, you know, and I know this changes, this evolves during the course of a lifetime, you know? That's the place, the place we want to pray from, the place that we want to speak our word from. That's the answer, I believe. See, we want what looks like evil or error condition. We, I, this is what I get this week, is that I want evil to always look like evil so I can say that's not in me. Yeah, that's true. I want, I want it to look a certain way so I can say, yep, that's not me. That's them. That's over there. That's not here. That's not us. But when enough people are willing to look you know, the other way, that's when evil has a capacity to, to move in, right? So it's those little compromises with truth on a daily basis. So that makes me look and I say, wow, where are all the little compromises I've made in, in the recent days? You know, people that, oh, I didn't open my heart as much as I could have. Or I was watching somebody on TV and I didn't bless them and send them love. The problem is, you know, I, I think it's always this. The problem is, is that we do not love. People so often say, I did not intend to harm another person. I say, well, good. That's good. It's good that you didn't intend to harm. But that intention, I think, could be um, more powerful, more powerfully expressed if we sort of turned it around and say, well, it's not just that I didn't intend to harm. I did intend to love. I did intend to love. So we, I think we all do it. If I look at this, you know, it will bring stuff up, right? You know, sometimes you just don't want to investigate something. You know, I'd rather not look at it now. Can, it, can I just, you know, can I just take a break from it? But I believe we have to go deep in here, right, if we want to play a bigger game in the world. You know, you don't get to play, I think, a big game in the world because here you are, you're a conscious being. You don't get to play a big game in the world if, hmm, if we're unwilling to do the deep work that we know we're here to do. And like I say all the time, I think that we are destined to become deep, deep spiritual practitioners on the path here. See, I remember when it, when, when it came to me that I am on this earth to be in God's service. And, and, and it's like, oh, that's great. And then I had this horrified thought. It's like, oh my God, what's that look like? What's that going to look like? How am I going to do that? How am I going to carry it out? Who, me? I'm not enough to do that. <laughs> Everything is church, really. You know, when I got that, my life turned in such a different direction. When I got that, wherever I go, you know, I go to Costco, Costco is church. You go to Trader Joe's, Trader Joe's, the bank, bank is church. Oh, you know. Science, science of mind, you know, there's much more to healing than just, you know, people think, oh, this is such a, um, a positive philosophy. You just have to say some affirmations and you're going to be well. I don't think so. I don't think that has not been my response, my experience. 
my experience is, is that when we take responsibility for our good health practices, we have better health. When we take responsibility for practicing the skills of good relationships, we have better relationships, okay? So for today, it, it all starts, I think, you know, I, I, I did yoga for years, and although I'm not actually practicing much right now, I'm practicing a little, but I'm not practicing as much as I used to. But I will tell you this, that in yoga, one of the things you learn is the importance of the breath. And so the breath is the spirit, we would say. You know, and we're always looking for that place of balance. I remember reading in um, Swedenborg. Swedenborg also, you know, I mean, everybody talks about the breath and how important it is. Um, you know, I go to Hawaii every year to study, and, and I study um, this Hawaiian energy spiritual system uh, that, uh, and the lineage I participate in is 25 generations of uninterrupted lineage. And one of the things I've learned is that the word Hawaii, which is actually Hawaii, Ha is the breath, and Vai is water, right? So Hawaii is the breath that moves along the water. Now, when uh, people not from uh, the Pacific came to Hawaii, they called them Haole because that meant no breath. I thought that was so interesting that the Westerners who came to Hawaii, you know, and remember that Hawaii was this very sophisticated culture. They were a very sophisticated civilization. They had had generations of monarchy. You know, the uh, Hawaiians love technology. In fact, the palace in Hawaii had electricity long before the White House. Yeah, because Hawaiians were such fans of technology. So they're actually very, very modern with it, with it people. But I thought this is so interesting that, you know, this, the, the idea of our breath shows up everywhere. And so what I could tell you today about it, if you were just looking for some little piece that you could incorporate, is for your breath to be balanced, you know? So if in fact we, Westerners, are shallow breathers, and it seems like largely we are, then what I would seek to arrive at is a place where my inhale matches my exhale. So if I inhale for three seconds, I exhale for three seconds. Now, I'm gonna tell you a little secret. When my mind is going crazy, Oh, I don't know about, oh, it could be any of a number of things. <laughs> but when my mind is going crazy, I'll just make myself sit for a minute and I'll say, I'm just going to do five breaths. And so I'll breathe in, one, two, three, four, breathe out, one, two, three, four. I'm going to ask you to do this with me today because I want you to notice how after five breaths, your energy has changed. Right? So I would mention just close your eyes and sit up tall and breathe in through your nose for a count, you count silently count to yourself four. One, two, three, four. Exhale. One, two, three, four. Inhale. One, two, three, four. Exhale. One, two, three, four. Again, inhale, two, three, four. Exhale, two, three, four. Last one. Inhale, two, three, four. Exhale, two, three, four. I invite you to open your eyes. Now notice how you feel. Hopefully a little more centered, maybe a little more calm, maybe in a place of neutral. So I want to point out that this is a good place to be, especially when you're thinking about an important decision you have to make. Or you have a really important question. Wouldn't it be good to get your mind to this place where we are right now and say, okay, God, show me in a way I understand what's the right next step for me? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're in a much better place to receive that information. Remember, the law of worship is that what you worship, you become. So for us, as metaphysical spiritual students, this is interesting. So for us, what we worship is what is above us, and by above us, I mean above us in consciousness. You know, what's the greater spiritual reality? 
the greater truth that we come from, and also we worship what is inside of us, what God has created. Mm -hmm. So balanced is the breath that I am. So I want us to just say that to ourselves silently. Balanced is the breath that I am. So not unlike when we say God's the love that I am, balanced is the breath that I am. So I want you to do this with me now. Close your eyes and just silently say to yourself, balanced is the breath that I am. On each inhale, balanced is the breath that I am. On each exhale, balanced is the breath that I am. On the inhale, balanced is the breath that I am. On the exhale. So now, from this place of balance, a place of peace, a place of equanimity, I know that God is right where we are, that we are surrounded and filled with God's infinite loving spirit, that God within us is the most true, most real thing about each and every one. So in this awareness of our oneness with God and knowing that we are all connected with each other on the unseen side of life, I speak the word for us that healing is happening here and now. So whatever it is that we call to mind that needs healing in our life or in our world, we see that in our mind's eye right now. And as we see that condition, we see it healed, all healed up in every way, we ask ourselves, who do I need to forgive for this healing to be possible? Yeah, it might be you, it might be someone else, it doesn't matter, and if you've forgiven them a thousand times before, well, this is just what's up today. So be willing, be absolutely willing to forgive again and again and again. And now ask your higher self, the spirit of God within you, to show you what you have to be grateful for today. And receive whatever spirit gives you. So it might be that you have a home or you have a wonderful partner or great friends or that you had a good breakfast today or that you managed to stay awake through the entire church service. I don't know what it is for you. But whatever it is, be grateful for that. Because forgiveness and gratitude are two of the essential keys for our healing. So we let our prayer be a blessing energy, a blessing activity, a healing light in the world that we live in. So we see our prayer emanate out from us to touch all people on the face of the globe. We bless our church, we bless all churches everywhere, synagogues and temples and mosques and ashrams, all paths to God. And I'm certain that we are blessed by being together today, that there is raising up for all of us. And so with an open, gracious, full heart, I say thank you, God, that this is the truth. I release this word into law, and so it is. Together we all say amen. All right, we'll sing one time together. so blessed I am so blessed I am so grateful for all that I have I am so blessed I am so blessed I am so grateful I am so all right, I invite you to hold your gift over your heart and we'll say our statement of giving together. From the love of pure spirit within me, I bless this gift. I send it forth to heal and bless and prosper. It is evidence of my faith and belief. It does good work in the world and returns to me multiplied abundantly. Thank you very much.
Sometimes it's hard to believe How simple life can be Just when you think you'll never reach the end But they're finally round the bend And see There's no need to doubt anymore Life's better than forgive again, too. <laughs> oh, thank you so much. Thank you for that word, Dr. Mark. Yes, simple breathing, and we shift everything. And Diane Vincent, hello. Do you, do you have a website for us to have more Diane? I'm Amish. I have none of that stuff. None of modern convenience. Right on Amish. Okay. <laughs> and thank you, Mr. Sam and Karen. How blessed we are to have you here. So our announcements for today. If it's your first time here, please join us out on the patio and we have a package for you to give you information about our church and our services. And if you're online, we have facilitators there who can answer any questions for you. And guess what? We make it easy for you to donate. You can text to give and on the back of your program is that QR code. You just snap it and you're able to give. And also, those of you who are here in church, we're not collecting right now, but we have a basket out front as you exit that you can uh, give your tithes and donations. We're very grateful for all of them. We have prayer with a practitioner. It's available after service in person or on Zoom. And this Wednesday, May 18th, meditation, 650, service at 7 p.m. Join our beloved Reverend Sydney, and the topic is equal with God. Amen to that. Today, we are doing our Love and Kindness Ministry Lunch in the Park. Please join us at 1230. We're feeding the homeless and others. You can sign up out on the patio, and we accept 
food donations and financial donations. If you have any, in for any questions, contact Gilda Gomez through our website. Also today, something wonderful is happening. We have climate reality leader and church member, Bess Fanning. She'll be giving a free presentation on the climate crisis, California and its solutions. Please come and join us. There's simple things we all can do to shift our climate and our planet. Um, also, very exciting, we're traveling again, Japan trip with Dr. Mark, October, spiritual adventure of a lifetime. Please, again, go to the website to sign up or out here on the patio. You don't want to miss this opportunity. Um, and Memorial Day weekend, something wonderful is happening here again. On Sunday, May 29th, the 1130 service, which is usually not on Zoom, but on May 29th, it will also be on Zoom. Um, we are inviting everyone. We're inviting our members to remember and recommit. We're renewing, inviting our practitioners to recommit. We rewire. We will install Reverend Dr. Sidney Lehmanstein as our assistant minister. How blessed we are with her. And then afterwards, as is the nature of North Hollywood, we will refire and we're going to have a delicious barbecue party for the kids and the adults. Please join us May 29th. Also, um, I'm doing this. Scientific Christian Mental Practice Class, part one with Dr. Mark. It's six Mondays beginning June 6th. It's on Zoom only, so 6.30. You could be in your jammies with your green tea and have this magnificent class. It's about Emma Curtis Hopkins. And um, you know, I am inviting our practitioners too because we always want to anchor ourselves again in our roots, and our roots are New Thought with Emma Curtis Hopkins. So how blessed we are to do that. And we have our Zoom virtual patio. Sundays, Wednesdays, before and after services, come and commune with your fellow congregants. It's a wonderful time to get to know each other. Zoom meditation, Monday through Saturday, 7.55 a.m. to 8.15 a.m., the best way to start your day. And, you know, anything you need to know is at our website. And last week I kept messing it up, so as is my nature, I decided to do a cheer. N-H-C-R-S dot org. Everyone, N-H-C-R-S dot org. Everything you need to know about church, website, information, newsletters, the classes, wonderful things. Participate in your spiritual community because you know who gets blessed? You do. Thank you and peace out. Let's all stand and do the peace song. Please repeat after me. I'm at home in the heart of God. I'm at home in the heart of God. My life is anchored in truth. My life is anchored in truth. I can never be separate. I can never be separate. I live in the consciousness of peace. I live in the consciousness of peace. I release all fear. I release all fear. I am living love. I am living love. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you.
Thank okay. you. Okay. Yes, indeed. Thanks, bro. Love you.